I'm not trying to get in no more trouble because I didn't got too old. I just got out of prison in 2000. Yeah, you said that. What you what was you in prison for, man? I was in prison for uh, probation violations. Okay. What, what was you on probation for? I was on probation for in Alabama at sex with a 16 year old, told me she was 19. And out there, they don't How play. old were you? I was like 40 something. Jesus. Yeah. And you didn't know? I, well, like I said. What's up, YouTube? Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing. Listen, if you want to support the channel financially, hit the super thanks button. Any amount is much appreciated. Now back to the content. You can pass by. You can pass by. What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. Um, so we got my man out here today. How you doing today, man? I'm doing okay. So far, so good. I know that's right, man. It's definitely a beautiful day out here, uh, if not a little hot. <laughs> All right, man. So are you homeless? Yes, I am. All right. And so how old are you? I'm 65 years old. 65, man. Hey, you look great for 65, man. Um, and so, you know, how long have you been homeless? Off and on, uh, at my first time when I got out of prison back in 2010, in Atlanta, here in Atlanta. Okay. Went, went through uh, ACRC, which is charging $9 Hold a Hold on day. real quick. All right, man, quick interruption, but so you were saying basically, you 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 know, 2010, you got out. Got, got out of prison, landed here in Atlanta, because I wanted to try somewhere new, because while incarcerated, a lot of people kept telling me that all the opportunities were here, and I got tired of the cost of living in California. Got tired of all the struggles in New Orleans, which I was where I'm from. So I came here, landed here, homeless. Went through the VA, because I'm a veteran. They signed me up to a transitional program, and they got me started on my way. Went through halfway houses. Uh, over the years, I accumulated to a point where I went through all the programs from Fort McPherson to the VA, and they got my own place, okay? Wow. How, long, how long did it take from 2010 to the point that you got your own place? 2015, it took me about five years. Oh, okay, wow, okay. all right. Finally made it to my own place, because I had to go through all their programs first. I had I get to go it. through all their systems first. Yep. Jump, you know, that, that's how they do you. you. I get it. Okay. So so what happened after that? I had my own place, was doing pretty good. Started messing around with the wrong people, started doing drugs. Started, what drugs? Uh, cocaine, weed. You so know. weed and alcohol aside, yeah. are we talking yeah. about crack? Right, all, okay. the, all the above. And just got disorientated, got out of uh, context, uh, didn't stick to the plan, started doing what other people wanted me to do instead of what I knew I should have been doing. Ended up getting into a physical altercation with one of my exes. She busted my windows out and got me put out of my apartment complex. With one of your exes? Right. How did that happen? Tell me about that, man. Well, she was an alcoholic and she liked to fight and get drunk all the time. And when you on, which I was on drugs, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. I'm feeding her habits and feed my habit, trying to medicate myself to try to deal with my life situation and that bad decisions, that's all I can tell you. Everything's about decisions. You either make the right decision, you make the wrong decision. I was making all the bad decisions because I wasn't in the right frame of mind at the time. I get it. So I mean, so basically y'all y'all both was, you know, out of it and, you know, got to fighting right. long and short. All right, all right, all right, all right. And so you've been homeless ever since then? Yeah, I got homeless after that, went back into another program, which is called the VEO on Westlake. They take you in, started working with them again, another veterans program. They eventually hired me, fed me. I worked security, started making a little money. So I started trying to work on buying my own. So they got a program in there where they give you an apartment with another veteran and you pay, your responsibility was paying rent if you started. And I did that for about a year or so. But I'm still under the hum homeless umbrella. So, I get it, yeah. So after meeting another young lady that, that I'm with now to this day, we end up moving out of that situation and into one of her son's home, which she couldn't take care of. What was it that happened in March that caused you to become homeless and out in the streets again? Okay. Um, what happened was, place that I was staying at, I was staying in a house that my son had had, but my son owed so much, and then once I got the place, after he get moved out, I moved in, without notifying the um, landlord or what have you, but at the same time, the landlord knew what was going on, so I started paying the landlord, then all of a sudden, he found out that I was engaged to a guy that was in the military, so he wanted to up the up 
the amount on the rent, plus we knew that we was in the process of buying a house once we got married. So he wanted him to force him into buying the house, and once he didn't buy the house, we just really wanted to sell the house. So I started paying for that. They eventually sold the house and put it and now I'm back on the street again. And that's okay, and so how long ago was that did that happen? That happened about four months ago. Okay, so you're okay. Yeah. I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah, she was just telling us basically that same story as yeah. far as um as far as how you guys recently ended up back out on the right. street. Right. Right. All right, man. So let's start from the beginning, man. So you say you're from <laughs> New Orleans. I was born in New Orleans. Man, shout out New Orleans, okay. man. Definitely yeah. everybody knows on this channel man that's yeah. definitely one of my favorite cities okay and but, so um and so growing up in new orleans man did you have both your mom and your dad in the household okay i'm 65 years old all right so when i when i was born it was segregation you couldn't use the colored bathrooms have colored people had certain bathrooms all that i'm i'm just a kid i'm seeing all this okay my father had kids back to back so he ended up joining the air force we ended up moving from New Orleans when I was nine years old to California. We arrived in California and watch. The watch riders in full bloom. Oh, sure. All the police and National Guard running and chasing people up and down the street. They bust out window, everything fire. Everywhere, I'm asking my father, what the hell you done brought me to? I'm scared to death in the back of the station wagon looking. After this is over with, we move in LA. My father being in the Air Force put us in Catholic school. So we go to Catholic school off of Vermont and Manchester, which is the worst Hoover gang. Crip gang in there. I ended up going to Bret Hart Junior High with Tookie, the leader of the Crips. I ended up moving to Compton where the Pyro boys are. So I got a lot of history and I've been through a lot of shit and I've been around. At the same time, I'm saying all this say this. I joined the Marines because I was in 11th grade in high school at Centennial High in Compton. I got in a bunch of shootouts, almost got shot several times, standing on the corner. It's like Minister Society, all that. I, I was all a part of that before the movies came out. Right. I, I, I lived that. Right. That's how they made the movies. Yeah, I did. I, I low ride it. I, I had everything that they talk about in the movies. I did it. But I thank God I'm still here to be able to talk about it. Absolutely. So I joined the, Maroon, the Marines in 11th grade because they're the only ones that would take me at the time. I kept going to the Air Force, Army, Navy. Everybody kept saying, no, wait till you graduate. I'm like, hell no, I ain't going to make it. I ain't direct graduate. <laughs> right. So the Marines said, you sign this waiver here and you go to school. Instead of going to the M Club, you can be a Marine. I, I stayed on that, in that AP's building. I got on that bus and I went straight to the Marine Corps. They transferred me overseas in Okinawa, Japan. That's where I got my high school diploma from, Kubasaki High School in Japan. Okay. And I stayed overseas for two years and came back to the States. When I got back in the States, the same shit was going on in Compton. People robbing and stealing. Half the people I knew was already dead or in jail. Right. So I tried to go back to New Orleans again to try to rehash my roots. Right. I did pretty good. Worked as a manager in Shoney. The first day I got there, my my, my father happened to be working at NASA in in uh, New Orleans East. Okay. And he told me, "What would you want to come to New Orleans for? There's nothing here." I said, "I, I can't live in California no more because there's nothing there either." Why was your dad in New Orleans at that point? Because he got transferred from Martin Marietta. So he was still in the military at this point. He's he's. He's, he's, he's my boy, boy, good to see you now. He's getting out the <laughs> Hold on, so quick interruption, man, but go ahead. My father, he uh, transferred from Martin Marietta and ended up getting a job at NASA in New Orleans East. Okay, during that time is when the space shuttle, uh, I think it was Challenger or something like that, he was trying to tell them that it wasn't ready to go up into space and they did it anyway and they killed all those people. So once that happened, they transferred him to uh, Huntsville, Alabama. A space and rocket center they built them a town all that in the meantime i just kept on going from pillar to post trying to keep myself afloat so why didn't you was you still in the military at this point no I, i've been out the military so why'd you leave the military because i didn't like my mos my job i was tired of being a grunt in the infantry uh my my concept was god job to kill people it's, it wasn't my job to kill nobody so uh, I always shot. So you kill people in the military? No, I kill. I, didn't, I ain't never killed nobody in my life. I shoot you in the arm, and the leg, and the heartbeat, but okay. I ain't gonna. I ain't never killed nobody. Okay. Okay. All right, man. And so, all right. So you know, was going from pillar to post. Do you have any kids? No, I don't. 
No kids whatsoever. You ever never been married? A, never been married. Never had a chance to settle down, stay somewhere long enough to establish a relationship. So what was like kind of the the worst or the most salacious thing that you've done living this kind of street life? Shot five people. Why'd you shoot them? Because they were threatening my younger brother and he happened to be me with at he happened to be with me at the time and and I didn't want that on me for my mom to be coming to me talking about what happened to your brother. Because we were, we was in the wrong place at the wrong time. We shouldn't even been there in the first place. But he want, but I had to babysit. He says he won't go with me. Then he out here in the streets with me. Then he got to deal with me when I'm out with here. With street shit. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And so I guess, you know, you've been with this young lady. Hey, uh -huh. what's going on, man? Give me one second, all right? So you've been with this young lady. Um, mm -hmm. Sounds like for a few years now. Yeah. Okay. And so... You know, why haven't y'all been able to kind of make things happen a little quicker as far as... I mean, it sounds like at certain points y'all have been stable and this, that, and the third. So let me just ask you like this. What are y'all doing at this point to try to get yourself off the street? Uh, try to find some type of reasonable, adequate housing that one person can afford to pay for. Because that's the struggle was. I couldn't... I, I kept trying to take care of everything on my own by myself without an uh, extra income. Okay. And so... I mean, she was, you know, she was very honest with us earlier. She told us that at certain points throughout her journey, she has traded sex for money and different things like that mm -hmm. as a lady out here on the streets. Yeah. Is that something that you were aware of? I was aware of it, but I let her know that I wasn't okay with it. But at the same time, by me being a loyal type of person I am, I try to work through with people. We try to work things out. We try to support each other regardless because everybody needs somebody. You know, I, I ain't the best person in the world, but at the same time, you know, everybody needs some kind of friend, and I'd rather be a female. I know? get it. Yeah. And so, I mean, y'all being in a relationship, when's the last time y'all had sex? Uh, about two nights ago. Okay. And so, where was that at? Like, was that outside on a uh, mattress? Okay. Yeah. Well, we got our spot at where we sleep at. Okay. So y'all have a spot where, yeah. like, kind of a normal spot that y'all go to? Right. All right, man. And so as far as like danger and stuff like that, man, what's kind of the the, the the most dangerous thing that's happened to you out here on these Atlanta streets? Uh, trying to keep from killing somebody as a Marine because that automatically clicks in to my mind. And I'm the type of person, I'm not trying to get in no more trouble because I didn't got too old. I just got out of prison in 2010. Yeah, you said that. What'd you, what was you in prison for, man? I was in prison for uh, probation violations. Okay. What, what was you on probation for? I was on probation for, in Alabama, at sex with a 16-year-old, told me she was 19. And out there, they don't How play. How old were you? I was like 40-something. Jesus. Yeah. And you didn't know? I, well, like I said, uh, I was doing drugs. The drug dealer came by with her. I assumed it was just another woman, another trick. So uh, let me just take a pause. I get my food. Okay. All right. And so, so what happened? I... Um, had a package delivered to me because I, I was running a trap house at the time, mm -hmm. drug house, especially everybody was there. He was, she was with him, and I assumed that she was of age because the girlfriend that I had at the time was 22. And they kind of looked favored. They, was, they were both similar in figure and all that. So she asked to spend the night at my place because she didn't want to keep riding around with him with the drugs, selling the drugs. So I automatically let her stay. So by me letting her stay, she got comfortable, had sex. Somebody told her mom where they saw her at. Her mom come knocks on the door, asked where she was. Me ignorantly said, she's not here right now, she went somewhere. And the mom left. Two hours later, the police come to the door, knocking on the door. She said, Robert, what's going on here? I'm like, what do you mean what's going on? He said, man, don't you know that that girl is da 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 this and that? And I said, no, I didn't know nothing. But it was the fact that they wrote down a statement. Two months later, they came on my job and arrested me. They wrote down what statement? The, my, what it came out of my mouth when they came and knocked so, on the door asked so me you told on yourself yeah. I mean I didn't know I didn't know so I'm just being honest just, they didn't tell you that she was no underage no until no. after you had already incriminated yourself yeah 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 so how long um and so you was on so did you go to jail for that no I got put on probation I got a suspended sentence okay 10 years suspended sentence after we went to court and all the facts came out they didn't they really didn't want to charge me, but they went on and gave me a 10-year suspended sentence and five-year probation. Okay. So that's when I left there and, and tried to find somewhere else to, to, to stay. But by me not 
over the period of time, not being a fine adequate place because you got to be within 2,000 feet. Now everybody got different rules, right? And stuff like that. Yeah, I violated once you get my, on that, uh, I violated my probation. Offenders list, yeah. Right. I violated my probation. By me violating probation, they automatically gave me 10 years. So I had to go do 10 years. Once I got out doing them 10 years from, from 2000. 2010, I came here to Atlanta because I didn't want to get set up in the same predicament. How am I going to do the, the other five year probation in the same people that just violated me? And, and it's going to be a cycle over and over. So I, I decided to leave the whole state all together. Contacted the VA. The VA told me if I make it to Atlanta, they'll put me in a VA program. I get it. I get it. All right, man. Hey, well, listen, man, that was a lot of interesting stories, man. You know, definitely entertaining um and informative as well man i mean that, that's that's a lot so all right so i guess at this point man i mean like i say what are we doing like it's been a few months now okay you're out here with your with your lady right what are we doing to try to get ourselves off the street i've already got all kind of stuff implemented i have hope atlanta waiting on me to find a place and they're gonna finance it i got the va i have four my pearson i'm I have a lot of resources. It's a, it's a timing thing. Most places you find, you, you, you gotta find out how much it, they want. Then you gotta contact them, let them know what it is. Then they have to approve it. Then I have to have the credential. By me not having my paperwork and losing everything, I'm going through the process of now I get my DD2, my military ID back, my birth certificate back. You have to have some type of form of credential in order get it, to, to, to get, get through this program. Going. That's right. what the hold up is right now, my okay. credentials. Waiting on all my credentials. And so I do you get social security. You sit so down for all that stuff? Yes, I do get social security, so I have an income. Okay. It ain't like I don't have it. And then when I do have a place to stay, I always get a part time job. Right, so you supplement the income. Right. So all I right, man. And so, I mean, has there, so has there been a history of drug use? Uh, off and on, yeah. What yeah. drugs? Well, we say crack already, right? Yeah, crack, uh, alcohol, and weed. Okay. Yeah. And so, when was the last Whatever. time you smoked crack? Uh, about a week ago. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, was that while she was still in the hospital? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, man. And so do we have any plans on kicking that addiction or? Well, my thing is this. Uh, I, it's not no excuse or nothing like that. But at the same time, when you're dealing with this kind of thing that other people ain't even aware of how people have to tolerate it, you medicate yourself to make it to the next day. You, and, you know, it's definitely a different beast out here, yeah. man. I don't think people you, understand yeah. kind of if you're continuously in this environment, what it does to your mental state. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I understand. But it's no excuse, but at the same time, like I said, it ain't like I do it every day, and I do it often, and I shouldn't do it at all. But if I've been doing that all my life, I have to go back to another program. I have to go back to another program. And my main motivation is this. Once I have a place to stay, and once I'm in some type of uh, 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 structured environment or, or a stable place, it makes you not want to fuck that up. It makes you not want to smoke dope. It makes you not want right. to lose that. Right, you're incentivized that no more. to, it's a to not go back. To yeah, keep, yeah to keep yep. it. But when you don't have none of that, you feel like you ain't, you ain't got nothing shit. to lose. So it's like so you might don't as well. Care. You don't care about nothing. Mm -hmm. you just wake up the next morning and just be like, whatever happens, happens. And I don't want to be that. So I like to plan my stuff out, structure, walk around here, sign up for programs, get my get, get my TV shots, get my COVID, whatever I need to do to say in the right frame of mind to keep me going to the next level because you got to prepare yourself that's what faith is all hey, about man put, put one yeah. one foot in front of the other man yeah. and go from there so yeah. all right man well listen we really appreciate you taking the time yeah. answering all of our questions man um if anybody out there wanted to reach out help or donate do you have a way they could do that uh so do you have like social media cash app anything like that i got a cash app what's your cash app man uh let me get it all right go get it all right so this is your cash app uh dollar sign Robert ATL 55. Right. All right. We got that, man. We okay. got that. Appreciate well, like I say, man, we really appreciate you, man. And we wish you nothing but the best out here. All right. Can I say something? Go ahead, man. What you got? All my homeboys from New Orleans to California to Alabama, they know who I am. If you want to look out, look out. I know y'all thought I was always doing good, but that was just something I kept undercover because y'all know me. I was always on top. I'm about to get back on top again. Yes, sir. All day, man. Hey, man, we appreciate you. All right. All right. All right, thank you. All right, man. Have a good one.